It is what it do, cyber world. It is your girl, the one and only Ash Said It, Ash Said It.com, Ash Said It.com. Thank you all for downloading the show. You know, we are quarter of a million downloads worldwide. I appreciate each and every one of you for all of that love and support. Today, I have a special treat for you. I've got the founder and CEO of the Appy Foods and Drink Company, Bobby Patel. How are you today? Thank you so much. Bobby, let our listeners know, where are you from? What city do you represent? I'm from London in the United Kingdom, uh, part of the European Union for a short time. Oh, cool, cool means. All right, so let's talk a little bit about Appy Foods and Drinks. How did this company start? The brand started from my experience of having 15 years in food and drink, and also a combination of my experience in fashion. Combining those two elements together, it created a distribution company which would represent brands, basically um, sell products around the UK and around Europe. Big name brands that needed to displace products sensitively, couldn't meet overriders or people cancel their orders on them, or if there was short dated stocks, we would take it on. And some of the big brands that we represent were like Coca Cola, Red Bull, and Cadbury's. And from doing that, uh, we were selling uh, those products around uh, around the region, like as mentioned. But I felt morally obliged not to keep doing uh, that any longer because I wanted to concentrate on making a healthy product range. Because my family having diabetes, I didn't feel it right that I would sell products that would contribute to that illness. And so I wanted to create an affordable product range that would be healthy but natural. And would to help people be able to live a healthier lifestyle, basically. So, in the beginning, what was one of the biggest challenges that you faced? Well, there's a number of challenges you'll get in any business, and I think most of them will come down to a few factors like raising capital to start the business off, is taking that big leap to basically forget everything that you did in the previous occupations and going ahead in, into the business world and trying to start up a brand against all the other big brands that are out there. So, the most common thing you would get is from you need the most is probably persistence. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can't go into the business world without thinking that you're going to get knocked down a few times. But mm-hmm. as long as you're willing to take the knocks, you can keep coming back and you can make sure that you can compete against the other brands out there who are obviously doing a good job in, in their own rights. So for me, the first issue was money. So to raise the money in our business was a, a hard and long struggle. Uh, we would have to call in favours from family members, from working from home, obviously, uh, trying to grow the business in a slow and consistent manner until we could fulfil the needs of having an office space and having uh, multiple clients and so forth. But ultimately, what I can say is all about persistence. You have to really keep at your work in business and make sure that you don't give up on the end goal and make sure whenever you start a business, know why you're starting that business and have a mission for it. So for me, it was always to have healthy drinks that were affordable to all people. But more than that, our kind of uh, ethos in the company, our vision, is to always make uh, products healthy, uh, sorry, to always put uh, people before profit. So we'd always make products in whatever field that we were going into to be accessible to everybody. Because this is very important for the today's generation, especially to always have healthy products that they can have access to at all times. And I think I said that quite a few times, but it is just to make sure that we get that across where we don't tax people for trying to live a better lifestyle. Right, absolutely. I, I totally agree with that. A lot of people are aware and they just don't care, but some people just don't have the knowledge. So to have a company that's actually, you know, you're educating people through your food and letting them know, hey, this is a healthier option than the typical thing that you would actually go and pick up at the store. It's also to do with the, the way you do it as well. So we could be healthier in a perceived way, but what we really do is we, we look after everything. We The idea is that we make usually are always innovative. So we make sure we try and push boundaries. If we're doing something that someone else is already doing, there's no way value to what we do as a business. So one of my things that I used to do when I was young, um, in my younger days of employment, was to be in fashion. So I used to work as a buyer at Burberry. And one thing you learn from that is how to consistently uh, come up with new ideas, new concepts, and to always push the boundaries in whatever fields you're in. So food is a element of business, but... To be honest, uh, food is just one one factor, but every part of business is always the same. Whether you're in food, fashion, cupcakes, as you mentioned to me before, or whatever it may be, it's, it's always um, the, the, the principles are all the same. You must push boundaries, you must innovate, but you always must do it the right way. If you're not doing it the right way, you won't last very long. And what I mean by that, for example, in Happy Food and Drinks, we uh, always make sure that we look after the farmers who work for us, for our crops that we grow, for our products. Uh, we give them well-paid contracts. We work with environmentally friendly packaging. Uh, we have uh, uh, very uh, significant ways, uh, well, sorry, innovative ways of sourcing our ingredients uh, to make sure they're always natural. So, for example, one of the big factors in 
in our company was that we had a, a, the world's first, one of the world's first commercially sold products that used stevia to reduce sugar in kids' drinks. Mm. And it was done on purpose that way because we wanted to first go with the kids so that they get used to having a healthy lifestyle from young. Because basically, people are your, well, I don't know how old you are, sorry, I don't want to be uh, assumptions, <laughs> but I'm, I'm 37. So for me, it's probably a bit difficult for me to change my lifestyle so quickly. Right. So easier to get to the young kids to change their lifestyle from the beginning. So if they do that from an early age, they will then take that lifestyle choice onwards. And it means that they will always have a, a thoughtful a thought process to how they how they consume their foods. So that's one of the main reasons why we started off with kids' products. And we use kids' licensing to um, encourage kids to have a healthier appetite. So we work with people like Peppa Pig, SpongeBob, uh, Disney characters, uh, Ninja Turtles, uh, Minions, and so forth. All with the premise that we encourage kids to have a healthy appetite. Uh, but the parents always know that we're on their side, so we make sure that everything that goes into our products is always healthy. Absolutely. And we, we're in the same age bracket. All right, you're only a couple years older than me. That's that's all it is. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you're fine. So when you're doing these, these kids' products, are you doing a lot of case studies? Are you allowing, you know, are you bringing in groups of, you know, kids and their parents, and are they trying these products firsthand? Yeah, so what we try and do is a twofold activity there. So before we launch a product, um, our head of marketing, Arena, who was actually an intern with us before when she first started. So, actually, I forgot to mention at the beginning that when the, the Abbey Food Drinks brand itself first started, it was only myself and an intern uh, by the name of Marina, and a very lot of help from my wife, uh, Lisa, and um, my business partner, my other business helped quite a lot in financially, Sam and Sorry. Uh, basically, Arena in the beginning helped us to research what kind of products that could have been, that we should be choosing. I mean, initially, I just had the idea uh, from a gut feeling, which happens quite a lot in new businesses. You don't have the time or the resources to have a lot of money to look into ways of how to do things. But my gut feeling was there was, there was a gap in the market for kids to have healthy natural juices mm. and with 50% less sugar. And so I worked with our production guy to create a low, uh, to use this word stevia leaf in our drinks, which was. I think, like I said, we were one of the first two in the world that were using stevia in, in commercially sellable drinks. And right now, it's quite it's quite uh, knowledgeable, and everybody knows about it now. But mm-hmm. we've been making for about seven years before even it was legislated in the EU. And um, so, when we're doing the research in terms of um, the role of Marina, was to find out what flavors would be acceptable for people, as long as we're making healthy products. Mm-hmm. What demographic would be after the products, and what kind of people would uh, want. Uh, these uh, uh, these products. I mean, what socioeconomic groupings they were. Those type of things we do a lot more now. But in the beginning, it was more to do with just raw business. Uh, to just to say, well, this is our idea, and we need to make it work. So, how do we make our message come across uh, clearly? So, we'll be down to lots of things like packaging designs, which is very, you know, you really need to focus on your brand and your packaging before you go into anything else, because that's what people buy into. But then. The most important part is the taste. If it doesn't taste good, you'll sell it once, you'll never sell it again. So you need to make sure that as much as you're being innovative, you must take your time and make sure that you make the product right. So what we did as part of that as well, the second fall was um, me and and the team came up with the idea of the Appy Family Club, which was basically a way in which we would get uh, kids to learn about food. So we would take them, we would take uh, school kids or people who'd apply to uh, come to one of our events and to learn about how where the food comes from, because a lot of kids don't know where their food comes from anymore. They think it comes from a supermarket packet, and they think um, they don't understand that cabbage comes from the ground or fruit comes from a tree or those type. They just don't have the clue because they've never been taught that way. And when they go to the supermarket now, it's different from when the days of our generation went, which is when usually it would be like a green grocer so would have lots of fresh vegetables and things like that already mm-hmm. uh, in, in, in its form and then you would have to chop it up and now obviously it's all pre-packed and processed usually so they don't know where food comes from but the purpose of that project was to first of all teach the kids that we were how where their food comes from but equally to get the de- details of the parents to, to give them follow-up uh, help in terms of booklets that we do and apps that we provide to help them uh, learn about foods and drinks uh, and a healthier lifestyle in general. But once we have that data, we can then contact them and say, well, do you 
mind if we ask you some questions about uh, the product. So do you mind um, telling us uh, what do you think about our last project? What do you think about the event that you went to? How, did your kids try our drinks at the event? Did they like it? What was wrong with it? What was good with it? What is health to you as well? Like those kind of questions, the very broad questions. Because health is very subjective. It's someone's healthy lifestyle is someone else's different way of going. The same way as when we say we want to make value for money products, right. what does value mean to the person? It's very, very subjective to, the, to that grouping that we, we aim for. So for me, when we're doing these market researches, it, it, if I could start all over again, I'll be honest, I would, uh, I would pay a lot more attention in the beginning of how and why we, uh, and who is our target audience and what, it, what those products are, you know, they aim for. And I would have put a lot more resources into creating this kind of event that we did in the larger scale to really get a nice community together, like you have in your podcast, right. to get people to really understand and engage with what you're saying because that, that is more important or as important as the product is because if they're all willing to contribute towards you, as I said, as your podcast, you've got a lot of membership that listens to this. It's because they're, they're listening because they, they, they want to know what you have to say or what people have to say. So hopefully some things I may say in this conversation might resonate, but I'd say like, like, like I said from the beginning, your question is a good question and I would say it's the question that needs to be asked by any business startup why am I doing this? And then once you know what that reason is, it needs to be more than money because if it's just about money, then you're not, then you're not going to last very long. You need to have a passion of why you want to help other people. Is it in your DNA? Is it part of something that's happened in your past? Use all those elements in your background and your history to uh, push through the business. But equally, once you know why, you need to ask other people why should they trust you to deliver that message that you're saying. Absolutely. Great point. Absolutely. Great, great point. So, Bobby, after 15 years of experience in the industry, you've seen the ups, you've seen the downs, you've seen the in-betweens. What has been the most rewarding moment for you? Um, probably when we got listed into the biggest supermarket chain in, in, in the UK, which was Tesco's. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you have a Walmart in your, gotcha. in, your, in your country. So, um, essentially, when we got listed with them, and uh, that proved a lot to me. So the idea was working because we started the brand uh, four years ago, I think just about, and we got listed within the first year, which you never get that uh, in, as a new brand. So it meant basically it was it was evidence and it was a... Uh, confirmation, really. Yeah, okay. confirmation that the idea was correct. And um, that all, and it's even more credence when you, or more proverb, you're going to say that... Uh, Provenance, sorry, should I say it's not provenance, then it's the right idea when uh, someone like a big supermarket buyer says, yeah, your idea is correct. And the fact that the idea was yours without much resources and just to say, this was just my idea, this is what I thought would work because I thought we need to reduce the sugar levels in people's diets. And so I wanted to create this product and they agreed. It just says that, okay, fine, that's great. That means that he's on the right track here. Yeah. Uh, and again, uh, a lot of that came from gut feeling. So there's a lot of people who say that in business. I, I think you can overanalyze and over, over use data for um, listening to other people's opinions and so forth, but you do need to listen to them. But ultimately, if you've got a good head on you, you'll digest it all and then your gut feeling will come through. And then when your gut feeling comes through, people like the supermarket buyers will come through to you. And then equally as much, you'll get awards as well. So one of the things we have in the first years of trading, we had a number of awards because we were, like I said, we were one of the first to use stevia in the world for our drinks, reducing sugar levels naturally. Um, this meant that everyone was, their ears pricked up and they wanted to hear what we were doing. And since then, since we've been doing that, I'm hopeful to say that probably gave other brands the the, the road to also have stevia-related drinks or start to really yeah. take your health seriously. So there was people like Tropicana, PepsiCo, Coca-Cola. I'm not saying we made them do that, but it yeah. also helps that there's a brand out there that has at least put the first commercial venture out there so that other people can then say, okay, look, they did it and it's selling. Not, not saying we're like the biggest selling brand in the world, but we're trying. And then I say that because of that, we're taking market share of the less healthy drinks, which means they have to then change their attitude to way they buy, the way they source products or the way they make their products. So even if we make a little 
brink of summer. What can customers expect from the Appy brand this summer? So we're venturing into various different projects now. So we've done the juices. So what, one of the four kind of fundamental aims was to reduce sugar levels, make it all natural, make sure the farmers are paid well, make sure we use recyclable, uh, recyclable and uh, zero carbon footprint uh, factories that could make our products. So now that we've got those things in place, we, we've got a bit more room to then diverse what we do as a business. So we're going to be making um, uh, vitamin D milks, which are going to come out soon. Uh, using licenses from Paw Patrol. Uh, we're actually launching that in China, so we're actually doing the reverse way what we usually do. So usually we start in the UK or in Europe and sell our drinks there, but this time we see the massive gap in Asia and China particularly where we think there's a big lack in um, uh, young targeted drinks for kids that are with dairy, with vitamin D, because they have very... I mean, I don't know if you know this, but a lot of people have a deficiency in vitamin D, even if you live in the Bahamas or in Africa or anywhere or in India, mm. you, you all have this deficiency usually because most people use sunscreen so that blocks out the values of vitamin D for good reason, obviously, because mm. there's problems with having too much direct sunlight. But when people start getting used to that, they don't then take in the vitamin D. So we made this vitamin D milk that would basically be sold into uh, Asia first because they have, well, they have a large population and they have a large demand for dairy from the European Union, mm. but more so they have a appetite for... Uh, the kids' brands that need they need to address the kids' issue there because they've had a few epidemics in the past that, uh, from local brands that have um, uh, had a few problems uh, in quality control. So they're now seeking a lot more European brands to fulfil their, or even American brands to fulfil their need in Asia for kids. And uh, we think the milk product will be a quite successful one. And then we're also launching a few uh, food initiatives. So we're doing uh, organic dried fruit snacks. And we're also going into the fresh food aisles now because we think as, as, as parents get more busy and as, um, as people have more access to credit and have more surplus cash, they then, um, unfortunately or fortunately, as a business point of view, it's good, but as a personal point of view, I think it's, uh, it's, it's unfortunate that people spend over their means and so they, they then think it's, uh, it's acceptable to, they have their different sorry, buying behaviours and they want to have things ready right now. So the new millennial parents would usually want things right now, ready to be made, ready to be eaten, rather than cooking themselves and things like that. So we're trying to shift away from people making the conventional ready meals where they're all full of preservatives or artificials or something that keeps them certain colours and, and so forth. And we want to, to bring fresh meal ideas with new technology that we founded to make uh, fresh foods last for a longer time. So we're really looking to bring that into, first into retail, but also into the airline industry eventually as well. Uh, all, all working in the same premise. It has to be natural and it has to be healthy. We won't do it any other way. Cool, cool, Benz. Yeah, you guys definitely have a lot on your, your plate for the summer, Bobby. That's a lot going on <laughs> oh, <laughs> for Happy so Foods this, this summer, and that's, that's amazing. I, I applaud yeah. you all. How many countries are you guys available in right now? We're in 29 countries at the moment. Um, it's, it, we're, we're developing those markets quite uh, slowly, so it sounds like a lot. And to be honest... It is a lot we're, still. <laughs> we're of our own success. We, to be honest, idealistically, we wouldn't go that quickly to all these different countries because it makes a bit of a situation when you want to try and raise cash to support those countries. But because the idea just resonated with so many people so quickly with the help of the British government and the DTI and the UKTI and the the trade advisors who help us to uh, create export opportunities. We've been accepted in many different countries now for who have all the same problems um, for health. So it's we're in countries like China, we're in Philippines, we're in Greece, Spain, Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago. Um, we're in uh, obviously England and Ireland and in France. So we're we're spreading quite a lot. And I think that's only in the Middle East, sorry. But that, that's all down to the factors that health is a global issue. It's not a localized yeah. issue. Everybody has the same problem. Yeah. Everybody has the same needs. And everybody wants health in a more easy and accessible way. And if we can deliver those uh, winnings for the, for, the, for the parent or for the families, then um, we're happy to uh, spread what we do. Uh, we're trying to limit a bit more now where we go to now because I think, like I said, if you expand too quickly, you can you can easily bankrupt yourself, to be honest. So it's better to strategize which countries you 
was to go for. In the beginning, when I was first expanding to different countries, it was basically to have a, a how can I put it, a distangled or, de- or a, a, de- 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 a deorganized demographic, so basically a deglobalization. So we were basically, when there was a summer in the UK, which is usually, well, we have our little two weeks, which is it's never <laughs> a long summer, which is only, only one right now, which is good. But um, when we have our summer, we have a, well, let's just say it's from June to August, for example, uh, we would get, get quieter in the off period. So then I would basically find countries where the sun would be in the winter periods for us. So, for example, in Australia, the sun shines in, in, in winter for us in December and November. And then in other countries like in South Africa, the sun will come in January, February. So we would basically try and follow where the sun was going. So we would have all year round trade because juices are needed in the hot countries all year round. But more so, I did not want to re- rely on the UK alone because, again, our weather's not very uh, consistent. So we don't have many ways in which we have four seasons like you guys might have. Mm-hmm. We have rain, snow, and, and then sunshine all the same day sometimes so it's one of those it's one of those countries where we're situated so why we expanded so quickly to different countries was because of that it's because I was following the sun basically wherever the sun went I would go and that's basically to just try get out all year round trade so we don't have to uh, struggle through the winter periods in, in England basically gotcha gotcha so now with all of this experience all of the big changes and you know, they say life is the, the best um, the best teacher yeah. in everything. And, and going through failures and going through mishaps and going through those uncomfortable conversations with your staff are all a part of the journey. Um, yeah. With that being said, what advice would you offer to any person now that may be listening that wants to come up with a health-conscious company that also wants to help keep the world healthy? So I'm like, I, I know in this, in this podcast I go off tandem sometimes, <laughs> but I will um, I'll explain why I did this. But basically, I think you have to be honest with your customer and with your staff. And so for me, one of the things that, some of the things like you mentioned earlier in your life, you'll go for a lot of struggles and strikes before you get to where you are at, the, at this time. So when I was young, I was in, I used to get to a lot of problems. I used to be a lot of I used to have a lot of uh, issues when I was a kid. I used to get a lot of fights and things like that. And I didn't finish university. I told that straight to anybody who's coming to see me in a meeting. So um, if you think I'm some sort of person who, who's who been highly educated to get this to where I am, I'm not. I've had problems in terms of uh, I'm why I'm even saying on this podcast. I've had problems with addiction, with gambling and things like that. And I say that because I tell that to my staff the first day. Anyone who comes to work for me, I tell them, not instantly, but within... Within the year, I'll tell them that this was, this was my past. Yeah. Just so you know, honestly, this is what the person I was. Whether you want to work for someone like me who, who has these who had these demons in their closet in the younger age, then great, that's great. You see, I've changed my uh, my leaf. People say you can't change, you can. Yeah. So I had a lot of issues when I was a younger kid, mainly because um, I'm having to support the family from a young age. Uh, I, I can blame a lot of things, but you know, honestly, it's down to me. And today, I, I was the one who chose to do certain things that I did, but. Um, there was a lot of pressure on me as a, as a young man. So when I was like, I had to grow up quite quickly from the age of 19, 20. And so when I found the company when I was 20, 21, so actually I've been in business for 17 years now, food and drink, I didn't realise. Um, it's uh, It meant that I had to grow up quickly. And that's one of the best things that ever happened to me. So when people say why they should work for us or anything like that, it's how you can portray your message to make people who want to have a healthy company, just be honest with them. Just tell them where you're from. Tell them your background. Don't need to say, I've got this degree or that degree. It doesn't matter. It just matters how much you focused on doing what you want to do. And if you want to, if your reason of opening up a healthy company is to enrich people's lives, to have access to better products, and to give them a more rounded way of living, then you're doing something good already. So whether it works or not, you're trying at least. And then the next part I'd say is probably, if your company follows that mantra and you are honest with your customers as much as your most your staff because for me the most important people are I could say the customer all day but it's my staff because at the end of the day they're the ones who deliver the message and deliver everything that, that comes from myself and because they do that it means that it gives me the freedom to then be able to open those doors to the customers who can then see from staff that they're getting a, a good service basically so for anyone who wants to open up a healthy company, those, just be honest and, and also treat your staff well. They're, they're the number one uh, people in the world. So in this era of politics where, I don't know, if people want, I'm not going to name, like we can say 
anything like that or try and segment people, divide people, you're no good to you. You're, you're, you're as a politician, even a, uh, you're, a, you're the CEO of your country, of your, of your country, of your company, if that way, of, of the UK, Theresa May's obviously, or of, of the Britain. So you, the one thing you never want to do is try and divide your own staff. So what you, your staff are the people. So for me, sorry, I'm getting a bit political here, but I'm just saying, <laughs> just want to get out of there. co-founder of the Appy Food and Drinks Company. Bobby, let everyone know how they can get in contact with you or if they need more information on the company and they need to reach out. Sure, if you want to find out what we're doing, um, you can go to appyco.com. You can follow us on Instagram and on Twitter and on Facebook, all the same tags. And if you want to follow me personally, I'm at, at Mr. Bobby P on Instagram and you can find out all the things that we're doing on there in the nation. Perfection. Bobby, I tip my hat to you and your staff and everyone involved with your brand. When I read about your company, I was like, okay, I, I got to see if I can snatch this guy up for a talk, a little chat. And I was very, um, very pleased and, and very uh, humbled that you uh, found time in your schedule for us. So I, I tip my hat to you. Continue to do great, great works. <laughs> oh, thank you so much and we definitely see more and more great things coming for Apico 2017 and beyond and um, I just want to say I appreciate each and every one of you guys that downloads my show we've, like I said we've got over a quarter of a million downloads worldwide it was not an overnight thing people people that come to me and say hey I want to do an, a, a podcast show and I want a quarter of a million downloads on my show you're going to have to get in the trenches and work it's a lot of work. People see me on social media and they're like, oh, well, she's at this premiere. She's on this red carpet. She's taking pictures there. But you don't see the work that comes from it. The, the, the things that I had to do to get to that place. And that's what this podcast is all about. You know, we've got all these multi-dimensional companies around the world and very successful people that are the head of them. But like Bobby shared with you today, everyone goes through their, their own struggles. And I want to share that with people to say, if you're going through something right now, if something is on your back, if something is happening in your family or whatever the case is, that's not the end result. Don't stay defeated. Keep in mind, anyone to tell you that you can't do what you want to do, you look them square in the face and tell them, don't believe me, just watch. Watch what I do. Watch me make it happen. Watch me make history. Because that's what this is for. This is what this is about. All right. Making history. Social media is nice. It's cool. It's fun. But real life is so much better. All right. Until next time, you guys. I love you to pieces. Deuces.